Hello once again, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. And our final approach here to kind of wrap up the topics on APRS lately. A couple more things I want to show you, but I'll put those aside and we'll group them in another video. So I just did a video on some WinLink stuff, some APRS link, you know, a lot of functionality, a lot of stuff that you can do for fun or for emergency or for whatever you want in the ham radio world, interfacing a radio with packet messaging, you know, data over RF, emails, text messaging, and more. So we showed you about with the FT2D and uh, the mobile link, which I showed. I, I love this little device. This little TNC is just, um, I, I, I've used it so many different instances. It's the most versatile little thing I've ever had on my desk. This thing is great. So the last thing I want to show you, and I did touch on this with a video about, it says about two years ago when I showed the introduction to APRS. So you can check that out um, to better describe and understand if you're new to the hobby or you're 50 years in the hobby and have never used APRS, but you have a radio that's fully functional and capable of APRS and you want to learn more about it, just trying to touch on those. So in our last little stop here, I want to show you something. The app is called APRS Droid, and this is an Android app. I'm not sure if they have one for iOS, but I would imagine APRS Droid means it's written for the Android operating system. And this takes it a little bit further. So you can do APRS with a radio. You can do APRS from the front of the screen to interact with messages and, uh, uh, you know, some... some uh, positions of people based on the GPS of the radio. But if you want to go further, the APRS Droid app um, on the Play Store, and it's available at other sources. Uh, one's paid, one's not. Uh, or the, the, the app you can buy on the Play Store and support, uh, support the creator. And there's also sites that are hosting it for free. It's the same app. So choose your destiny. And um, so a lot of things you can do here. What you're seeing here is everything that's being decoded from my radio on RF. So I have my radio, the FT2D, connected to that TNC, and you can do this without a TNC. You can do this with a simple audio cable from your handheld interfaced to the headphone or mic jack on your phone or tablet. And all it's really doing is taking the audio that it hears from the frequency 144.390, or if you live in a different part of the world, you have a different APRS frequency, and it's taken that and the app's listening to it. You know, if you go up here into preferences and you go to connection preferences and you go to connection protocol, it gives you an option. Do you want a TNC? That's what I have, the KISS TNC. You can do audio AFSK. That's direct with a cable. It's a $2 cable. Or you can make one. Maybe you have one. Uh, it goes, you know, right from a Bofung handheld right to uh, the app. The difference is it won't have the transmit capability unless you use Vox and that can get tricky sometimes with the audio levels of the app and the radio and line levels and stuff so that's another reason why I have the TNC it's kind of it bridges the gap it makes sure it keys the radio it actually uses a PTT line keys the radio and sends the audio at the appropriate level so you can do this with the audio cable but it's a little tricky to set up receiving okay transmitting a little bit tricky and then uh, internet. You could do this internet also. You don't have to have a radio in sight at all. But I like to keep radio in our hobby ham radio. So it's not fun for me if I'm doing APRS over the internet. I might as well get on Twitter. That's my uh, theory on that. But to get your feet wet, download the app. Go on internet APRS and check it out. And then you can do Kenwood and some other way. So we're just going to leave it on TNC. But we'll go back here and show you the meat and potatoes of this app. This is the... The hub here. This shows you all the received stations with their call sign and whatever packet data in a list. All this came from my radio via W4OT3, my local digipeter. And it saves it in here and it just adds and adds and adds. If I want to see these uh, visually on a map, I can click the map button up here. Now check this out. Here's a map of Florida. And that is all the stations that I, am, I have received on my radio, they're in my station list on my Yesu 2DR here. But they're also, because that audio is going out to my TNC to the app, that is showing up on my app. Now, you're not going to pull APRS stations from Africa and California because they're not coming out of the local digipeter or the, it would just, you know, this is locally, uh, local as far as you can see on the map here because there are digipeters that take us, you know, 
uh, take it further out, you know, based on your paradigm or wide network settings and all that. So anyways, this is your uh, map here. And you can see if I zoom in, you know, there's me, KJ4YZI-9. And that's because I have the tablet set up for my vehicle. Dash 9 is the SSID for a mobile vehicle. Dash 7 would suggest a handheld. Dash 3 would be a digipeter and so on. Um, I can see also on this map weather stations. You see WC4PEM-8 weather station over here. Clicking on that, um, I don't remember how to get the weather data off of there without going to APRS.FI. So in the app, there might be a way of doing that. I, I honestly forget. So here is, um, let's see. So there's a bunch of weather stations on here. See, NI4CE, take out the four and it's nice. <laughs> Jim taught me that one time. So, um, you know, you could, uh, there should be a way to get the raw weather data off there. So another cool thing is a lot of repeaters, uh, gateways, DMR repeaters, D-star repeaters, analog repeaters, echo link nodes, RMS express gateways, and more are beaconing on APRS now. I think the days of finding a local repeater book at a ham store or ordering one online for 13 bucks is kind of gone because you can either go to the Internet and find a free list of repeaters near you or if you want to look on here, you could actually see on the map repeaters that are beaconing their position. You see here, there's there's like four of them on this little spot here. You got the 775 machine. You got uh, uh, there's an Echo Lake node there, a D Star repeater. There's more, but you can see now exactly where the repeater is on a map if your repeater is beaconing that information. But a lot more helpful than carrying a book with you for sure. So all these stations here, and the more that come on, the more that will pop up on the screen. And I can also go to messages. So let's see. Uh, if I go to the list here and I click the little arrow, that would be messages. So you can see I sent a message to this guy who was mobile, W4KBW-9. Uh, I was just testing. But watch this. If I click that, uh, I can send a message back to him. Or go like this. Where is he at? Find him in the list. Uh, well, let's click on, let's do this guy here. You just click on a mobile here. Watch this. Map. There he is. It kind of zooms me right in to where he is. There he is. So, pretty cool stuff if you got a group of people utilizing APRS um, and you're wanting to see rather than calculate GPS coordinates and positions. Um, you know, given that you have the ability to take a phone or tablet with you charge it on a battery bank or solar like I do in my kit, my go kit, and uh, or power it on. You know, you don't need internet for this. Again, I have the internet connected on here, but this is all RF. There's no internet. I don't have it, the internet side of it turned on. So I could also click on his screen there. I could send him a message. I could look. If I had internet, I can click on APRS.FI, see him on the APRS map. I can go to QRZ, pull up his station information right there. Pretty neat stuff. And also, if I hold on here, I get another list. So I can go to station information messages. Let's send a message. There you go. Hi. KJ4YZI here. <phone rings> Testing. Yeah. Everybody's got to text when I'm doing a video, you know? Wow. So anyways, uh... You, you click OK, and it sends it out via RF. All right. So a lot of good, useful stuff on the app here for APRS Droid. Um, there's the echo link here. Let's see. We'll go back to map here. Now, the map that you're seeing drawn when I zoom out, that's actually pulling over Internet. Now, it, it will happen over RF when you don't have it connected and you're out in the field but it's limited if you've never loaded that area of the map before it might need internet to download those tiles on the map um that's just uh how it works i guess because they don't want to you know make the app 500 megs full of maps that people may never use so it pulls the map of your area so um you know, you could filter it, show the last two days, 30 minutes. If you're in a busy area, you could turn off the, you know, you could filter it down to 30 minutes so that you don't have a congested screen of stations that are not there anymore. 
There's your raw data there. That's the log. So that's actually the, the, the received stations that are coming in and the transmits. You can see the green and transmits for me. And uh, that's actually, you know, the, the received APRS message from the Digipeter on there. So one last thing, if I go back to messages, check this out. You see here, when link dash one, I was actually sending or checking the mail uh, functionality on here. So you see, I have like a chat on here. Instead of doing it on the radio with the list on the, the ASU, if it's hard for you to see or hard to navigate, right here. So see, it, it asked me, I sent a message. It asked me for my login, gave me that code. If you haven't seen the video on APRS link, I just posted it. You can go back and watch that and see what I'm talking about. This is email and WinLink specifically over APRS. So it's asking me for my login. So I can do the same thing as I can on the messages on my app or on my uh, Yesu right here on the app. So I get a, what's the advantage? I get a larger keyboard. I get to see more. You know, it makes it a little easier to use. And with a phone or tablet in a go kit uh, with a solar charger or a USB battery bank, you can power a phone for you know a long time or as long as the sun's up and keep this rolling. Uh, it would definitely uh, make it a lot easier to use the the service, you know, APRS here. Okay, so that about wraps it up. You know, I I know I've had several videos on the same theory of APRS, but different means of using it, and I'm just trying to provide a little bit of information touching on each method. And then you can go out there and research, play with it, and get familiar with it. If I tell you exactly how to do it and leave there's no guessing room for you, I don't think you really learn. I like when people see what I'm doing. They get excited. They want to try things. They want to brush up on their skills. And then they go back and they start playing with it and they figure out things that I didn't even know. So I don't know everything. But, uh, you know, it's it's fun to play with stuff like this. It's It's adding to our hobby it is something that you can teach another person be an elmer to somebody else show them about aprs uh, get them interested in it turn them on to the videos and you know there's there's something for all of us in this hobby and that's what makes it great so you know i'm trying to be all over the place you never know what you're going to see here at ham hey, radio concepts but seven three and thank you for watching we're going to check out some other cool stuff here in the next few videos but Feel free to go back on the channel and search for other APRS stuff. There's several other videos. and Let me know in the comments how you use APRS, if you do. Or please debate with me and tell me how this is not useful. I want to hear from the guys that tell me it's nothing more than watching somebody drive to work. Or, you know, how, how does this not benefit you? I'm just curious. 7-3, more videos on the way. Subscribe and turn on the bell. KJ4YZI.